Now, as we start 1 Corinthians, run back to where Acts 18, where Paul is in Corinth, uh, teaching and preaching to the people. Corinthians is a carnal church. There's a church that just remained babes and would not grow. And Paul has to address this in this epistle. Now, years ago, I would say, you know, you'd be foolish to name your church after the Corinth church. And when I did a search in 2016 today on the internet, Google search, Corinth Baptist Church. There were more than the fingers on my both my hands of churches all over America, the Corinth Baptist Church or Corinth Community Church. Who would name their church after these babes? And yet, you're going to see America here. Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, so it was the will of God for Paul to be an apostle. And we talked about what the apostle had to be, the three uh, steps for apostle that can't be fulfilled today. And so Osteus, which you find him in Acts 7, 18, 17, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, you can find it on the map, to them that are sanctified, set apart in Christ Jesus, so Christians. Right into Christians. And wait till we see what kind of Christians these people are. Called to be saints. So they're not dead. They're living. Paul would not write to dead people. Some people say that their saints are dead. And after they're dead, then they'd be called saints. No. I'm a saint dead or alive by the blood of Jesus Christ. With all that in every place, I call upon the name of, of Jesus Christ. Our Lord. So there's. Different places in Corinth, different church meetings, different places they're meeting. But there are Christians all through Corinth, both theirs and ours. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given by Jesus Christ. With grace, grace, grace. The wonderful matchless grace that God's given us. That in everything ye are enriched by him. You made authority. You made great by God. By Jesus Christ. In all utterance and in all knowledge. They knew but they did not do. Right. That's the problem. They knew it. Be doers of the word the Bible said. Even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you, so that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, so one thing about the church in Corinth, as we are today, we're looking for Jesus coming. And you say, well, look, see that? Back in 59 A.D., they were looking for Jesus. 60 A.D., 100 A.D., 200 A.D., 1,000 A.D., 2016 A.D. Jesus Christ hasn't come yet. He's not coming. He's coming. We're just a lot more closer. Look how long it took for the first advent. Almost 4,000 years. God's patient. Who shall also confirm you unto the end? That you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you're looking for him to come. He, when he comes, he's going to come. What's that confirmation when Christ comes? If you're not in the clouds at the rapture, you're not saved. When that trump blows, if you're not there, you've never been saved. You just outright rejected Jesus Christ. You didn't have the right faith. You didn't have the right word. You didn't have the right religion. Confirmation is when the trump is blown and we're in those clouds. Those are the ones that are saved. And that be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I believe that the judgment seat of Christ happens after the rapture. I don't believe we the rapture, when we see Jesus, then we go right to heaven. I believe the judgment seat of Christ happens between seeing Jesus and then when we finally get to heaven as this 
earth will be seven years in tribulation period with Antichrist. God is faithful. Thank God for that. That's the key verse. By whom ye were called unto fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Are you called? When you take a Bible and you witness to someone and you tell them what their state is, you tell them what Jesus Christ is, you tell them all the means of salvation, what God expects them to do, you are calling them. God saying, will you answer the call of being saved? And they have the answer, yes or no. They can stay on the line and talk to God and get right, or they can just hang up and go their own way. It's a calling. Now I beseech you, brethren, Christians, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's, that's, that's an oath. By God, by Jehovah, by Lord God. He, he's taking a, a kind of oath here that we're serious here. I'm going to talk to you serious in the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, please. That you all speak, that you all speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Paul wants unity in the churches. He doesn't want you to, you know, there's no division amongst Christians, but a Christian should be division from darkness, from evil, from wickedness, from the world. You ought not be division because... This group makes more money than that group, and this group has been in the church longer than that group. And we're going to see that this church follows this man, this group follows this guy, and we sit in the right-hand side of, of the church, and they sit in the left-hand side of the church, and they're the first ones to go, and they're the last ones to leave. And, you know, that goes on in the churches today. And Paul says, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I speak. You, you knock it off. You're supposed to be getting along. You're supposed to be in fellowship in God. What's all this nonsense? For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, Christians, by them which are the house of Cleo. Uh-oh, Cleo told on them. Paul, did you hear what that Corinth church is doing right now? You need to address that. Now, would you say Cleo was a tattletale and should keep the mouth shut? Or Paul said, hey, these people told me there's trouble. And it need to be dwelt with. And Paul takes Cleo's side and starts rebuking the church for what they're doing. That there are contentions among you. Now, this I say, that every one of you saith, I am a Paul. I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas, and I'm of Christ. I like this man's preacher. I like that woman's preacher. We're the Lutherans. We're the Methodists. We're the, Cap we're the Catholics. We're the Baptists. We're the Mormons. We're Joseph Smith. We're do this guy. We're the radio evangelism. We're the TV evangelism. We're the ones that don't have TVs. We're the ones that do have TV. We're the ones that, that go out and do this. We're the ones that go out and do that. That's what this church is doing. Some people got all this, this preacher's tape. Well, this group of people have all this guy's CDs. It's a vast difference going on. Is Christ divided? No. Was Paul crucified for you? Or were, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? The answer is no. I thank God that I baptized none of you, but Crispus and Galus. At least any should say that I had baptized in my own name. He was saying, listen, I'm glad I didn't baptize any of you guys, maybe two of you. Because then you'd be bragging about, oh, I was baptized when Paul was here. Paul did my baptism. See my baptism certificate? It was signed by Paul. And I baptized also the house of Stephen, Stephen Annas, besides, I know not whether I baptize any other. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Okay? And to cut a long, long series here short is, 
The only one that is authorized in the Bible to do baptisms is the pastor of the church. You get a guy come through, he's evangelist or missionary, and he's given the pulpit time, and some of the people in church get saved. It's the pastor of that church is to do the baptizing. Not the, not the evangelist, not the uh, missionary. That's not their church. They're just visitors. I'll throw another thing in there. The pastor is to be in the water with the person being baptized. I just want to throw that out there. For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Not with wisdom of words, you know, dialect and dictionary and all that, and big, long, archaic words, and, you know, Hebrew and Greek. And least the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. In other words, you preach such big words that people, oh, and they don't even know what you're saying. Be simple in your words. All right, here we go. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. The preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. When you tell people about the cross, about Jesus Christ, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. Those who will not believe the gospel that you preach, to them it's foolish. Guy died on a tree, buried. You say he's risen. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. Mary can do better than that. Allah had more strength than that. Uh, magazine sound. That's, that's just as better. Well, you're just an idiot. Take your religion back in the church house, will you? But for me, if I hear someone preach the gospel, it's the power of God that saved my soul. It's the power of God that can save any lost soul. It's how you look at it. If you're saved, it's wonderful, great. If you're lost and rejecting, oh, shut up, will you? You're a hate monger. You have no love. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. This preaching of the cross. What is it? A guy gets up either on the street or in a pulpit and he just starts screaming at the people. What is that? That's foolish. But the message he preached is power. Yeah, when I when I go down to the to the farmer's market and I start yelling and screaming and oh yeah. If I wasn't preaching the gospel from the Bible, and just screaming and, and, and drooling, and you would have every right to put me in a mental institution. Now, this guy's crazy. He's, what's his problem? But since I got the power of the gospel, I am prevented from going to the mental institution because I've got the life, the eternal life. I am offering to you that all can hear what God has to say. It's a big difference. And to many people, when you do preach, it's not wise, it's stupid. Why don't you sit in a classroom in a desk and listen to a guy get up there and lecture you with a blackboard, a whiteboard, and, and PowerPoint, and all kinds of presentations, and get a, ooh, all kinds of degrees. That won't save you. And will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has not God made foolishness the wisdom of this world? James 3.15 There are people out there that they think they're better than you. They think they know more than you. Oh, the Bible is just written by men. Yeah, true. What about your textbooks? They're written by man too. But I've got the power. You've got foolishness. You actually believe that from everything here we are, there's nothing. From nothing, we hear. And yet from me, we're here because of God. And I've got the I've got the Holy Spirit and I've got the testimony signed, sealed to me, which you don't have, because the Bible says you can't get the Spirit, God's Holy Spirit, because you're not of God. So you're stupid to believe to believe all those things. Just take God at his word and then you'll get the Holy Spirit and you'll get the truth. Disputer of this world. We get a lot of disputers. A lot of people 
Oh, oh, what are you doing? Oh, 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 everything else. And, and in my heart, I know God is right and they're wrong. And I can pray to God, my father, about those people and say, Lord, they need to be saved. They just don't know what they're doing. They have no idea what they're doing. Just like what Jesus cried on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they're doing. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. Romans 1. It pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Now, you got to be very careful here. Because 21 in the modern Bible, it pleased God by the foolishness of the message to say the, the, the foolishness of the message. Is me telling people about the gospel of Christ died for their sins, was buried and rose again the third day. Is that foolish? That's what these modern Bibles are saying. It's not the man getting up there being foolish. It's not the idea he's screaming and spitting and hollering. It's foolish. Yes, it is. But not the message I have. The message is not foolish. The way I do it, it's full. So what's up? Man, you just screaming. It's just stupid. It's 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 foolish. It's you're ignorant. Okay, you confirm First Corinthians one. Thank you very much, because that's what God told you it was. But you can go in your ball game and paint your faces and wear wear here dudes and have crazy outfits and dress up like the, like the mascot and all that and woo 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 and then you can buy all the beer and act like an ass. <laughs> Uh, wasn't that a good weekend? Oh, yeah, man. You tripped down four of those bleachers. Ah, that's so, so funny. That black guy. Let's get a picture of that. Hey, look at that selfie. Uh, uh, Jesus saves. You idiot. Will you shut up? To them, sports and rock concert is more wise than Jesus Christ. So if, you, if you're passing out gospel tracts or if you're preaching, you're bringing the gospel to somebody and somebody looks at you in the face, you know what? You're a fool. Smile. Because God said <laughs> that's what it is. But, but, unlike the modern Bibles, don't get the idea that the message is foolish. That message is power of God. When I stand and preach at people and slobber and all that, I'm being a fool. Only a fool would do that. And God says, Mr. Haver, you know, you're a fool. My son, you're a fool. You're so foolish enough to stand in the street corner and yell at people. I like that. Now take my Bible and do that for me. I like that. And I will be rewarded with crowns for, for being foolish with the power of the message for people to hear about Jesus Christ over somebody. Well, we use our light to shine. Yeah. Light is going out. So God, by the foolishness of preaching, you see what God thinks of preaching? It's foolishness. A guy gets up and just lectures people. Some fall asleep. Some are doing their nails. Some kids are playing. Very few pay attention. To save them that believe. See that? Look at that. Look at that. You preach the word. Salvation comes by them that believe. For the Jews require a sign. You hear me quote this one all the time. Signs are for Jews. We're going to run into this through Corinthians. Paul's starting to let it out. Got to nail, nail this down. We're going to get in trouble here. And Greeks to Gentiles seek after wisdom. PhD, DD, DR, MR, uh, titles, initials after their names. Paul says the Jews require signs, and the Greeks, the Gentiles, want diplomas on their wall. So when you go in their office, oh, look how great I am. See all these diplomas? And for $1.50, you could probably get some yourself. I can tell you right now, I don't have ordained papers, but I can go get ordained papers. $19, whatever it costs, I can get them. I got diplomas. I, I'm, I'm a doctor. I've been classified as a doctor through theology. It's in a lockbox somewhere, so don't, it, don't get lost. 
But we preach Christ crucified on the cross. What do you preach? What is it you preach? Love? Puppet shows? We preach Christ crucified. Unto the Jews, a stumbling block. They trip over it. They fall over They're the ones that did it. That's not our Messiah, they would say. And unto the Greeks, Gentiles, foolishness. And ask my family, don't you think that everyone thinks we're fools? But when you get one guy, we've had a guy coming out with us, doesn't he just think it's a wonderful thing for the, for the word of God to be preached? There's one guy, hey, great, amen, and, and, and he enjoys to hear the preaching I preach. When I preach about hell, he enjoys it, and he, and he encourages me. And when you look at 30, 45 people across the street, and they're like, guy's an idiot, would you get out of here? Thank you, guys. You confirmed the word of God. You know, you know it. You can just imagine the great white throne judgment, all these people, everybody that ministries like this. You know, that's just foolish, God, that you sent that guy to... Okay, open the book, because heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. Open up 1 Corinthians and have that guy read. See, it's in the Bible. Yes, it was foolish. But it's the power that would have kept you on that side and not going in the lake of fire, my friend. And he tried to warn you, didn't he? You want love? That love was by the foolishness I sent him to preach my son. foolishness but unto them which are called me saved both jews and greeks romans 10 i think it's like 11 12 christ the power of god and the wisdom of god so we can come together as jews and gentiles when we're saved that it's about who jesus christ what's it going to be about in glory jesus christ and it could be about your favorite preacher. You're not going to recognize him. He's going to get a new body and a new name. Though you see their names plaster all over the place, phone numbers and emails and whatever it is, they'll get a new name. And it'll be all about the name that we do know will be Jesus Christ. Christ, the power of God. The power of what? To save me. And the wisdom of God. What's the wisdom? He knows everything about God. Because the foolishness of God. Now, if God was a fool, watch this one. If God's not sarcastic, the foolishness of God is wiser than man. Even if God was a fool, he'd still be a lot smarter than man. <laughs> I like that. That the weakness of God, if God had ever been weak, is stronger than man. I'm trying to read that. Romans 13, 33. So if God did have any infirmities, any impurities, he'd still be 100% better than man. Isn't that great for God to tell us that? Man is nothing in the eyes of God. Absolutely nothing. For ye see your calling, brethren, say people, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not mighty, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Whew, that's a hard verse. Those of great high esteem don't really get saved. That's a warning to us. People of high degree and and high knowledge of people and great great people of the world don't get saved because they won't look down to the foolishness of what preaching does you got somebody important in in politics and somebody is on a street corner preaching jesus 
that guy who's in that big car with all the money and the, and the booze and the women and all, he's not going to want to stop and listen to that. He's got no troubles. He's got no problems. He doesn't need God. He's got everything. As with that homeless person, the church is taking care of the the the, the soup kitchen is taking care of him. The people are giving him money, so he don't need God. He's got work from men to take care of him. There are some people that will not get saved because of their condition of life. For them, there's no need to be saved. I'm okay. And that's the scariest people in the world. When they can tell you, hey, listen, I'm okay. I know. That's scared. Because if they believe they're okay, they're going to go nowhere with God. I've known somebody uh, since 1987. I don't know how many years it's been. Everything's been okay. And everything hasn't been okay. And with the, with the prayers that I've asked God, I've asked God things not to be okay. And once it comes out of it, it's still okay. And there's no salvation. Not everybody's going to get saved. When we all get to New Jerusalem, everybody in this world is not going to be there. Hell, the lake of fire, will be more filled with human beings than there will be New Jerusalem, the new heavens, and the new earth after Revelation 20. Because Jesus said, many will go to Broadway, few will go through the straight gate. We've got to get that. That's what he's teaching his Corinthians. So, for ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, and Corinth had wise men, we're in a Roman government here, you know, philosophers and all those other idiots that talk. Not meant mighty. Man, they had a mighty army. You know how big the Roman government got empire? The gladiators. Man, those gladiators fought for death. The mightiest gladiator that won is the one that's still surviving at the Colosseum. You think he's going to turn to God when Caesar gives him, you know, the Caesar, the gate guy, you know, the, the thumbs up? All right. Why would he need God? After the flesh. That's what they're looking at me. Muscles. See, I got muscles. See, I got money. I got all the girls. I got my pictures in all the magazines. I don't need God. Not many noble are called noble. But God has chosen the foolishness, has cho chosen the foolish things of the world to confound, confound, confound the wise. You know what I am in the eyes of God for being a street preacher? It says right there, I'm foolish. I am foolish to take the word of God and go preach it to a bunch of people with the power of what the scripture has. The message I have is power. But for me, God said, I'm going to use that fool. And then when I get the glory, I get rewards, if I get any, Lord willing. Then the foolishness that the stand I took will be rewarded for good. There'll be many people that will will come into heaven by the actions I've done, the ministries I've been involved in. And there'll be much more people who will go off in the lake of fire that I tried to stop them. And there'll be some people that go off in the lake of fire that I should have stopped and I did nothing. Preachers got to realize, preachers, the men, not the message now, the preachers, you know what you got to get back to your, your foundation of what you are? You're foolish. Get off your ivory tower and shower and, and all who you are, man of God. God said you're a fool. Chosen the foolish things of the world to conf confound the wise. 
And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things that are mighty. God will use the weak. God will use a little child singing a, a gospel hymn to break someone's heart. God can use a little disease in the hospital bed to get you right with him. God can use old grandma in her in her bedroom on her knees. Just belly can get off of every night praying for her family. The Bible says the woman is, is the weaker vessel. And I'm not, she, you know, she's emotional and stuff like that. But what about the, the weaker vessel? What about a mother on her knees praying for her children that step off into hell? That's a pretty big jump to stand by your mother when God, when God has been listening to your mother's tears and her prayers for you. And what do they usually think of a religious mother? She's a fool. God said, yeah, she's really, you know, she could be sleeping right now. She could have herself a cup of coffee. She could watch a little TV. She could read her book that she wants to read. But no, she's on her knees talking to me about you, that you will never listen. Let's get to back to what we are. We're, we're nothing in the eyes of God. We're just dirt. Saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ that Paul said the grace. And it ought to be honored that God's given us ability to live, to preach the word to people who are going to hell. That maybe we can stop them. And get off the sense that we're not going to save 10,000. We're not going to save 20,000 on the other hand. And the base things, the, just the normal things of the world. And the things which are despised has God chosen, yea, and things which are not, to bring to naught things that are. It'd be nice to have a Christian president in the United States, born again, Bible believing. But do you really think with that thing, with, with the CIA and with his, uh, I forget what they not CIA, with his guards there, I can't think what they're called. Secret. Secret Service. All the world is eyeing him. All the neat network televisions, all the rulers of the world are eyeing. Do you think he's really going to stand up and be a fool and speak the power of God? Really? You think those Sunday fireside chats and some of these presidents, but you think they're actually going to stand up and just talk about Jesus Christ? Really? When they know the media and the atheists of this country and the religious of this country will bang him and, and nail him and crucify him and kill him? You really think that high office? You might, I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but the more power you get, the more you get with pride and proudness, and God can't use that. That no flesh should glory in his presence. Jeremiah 9.23, Galatians 2.9. It ain't going to be about our flesh. We're going to get a whole new body. The sin will be gone. Stop saying, look at me. Stop plastering your name all over the place. Plaster Jesus Christ. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom. Oh, I'm wise. See, standing and preaching is foolish, but in the eyes of God, I'm wise. To man, it's foolish. You idiot, what are you doing? God's like, I, I like that. 
That is why it's what he's, you know, he, he's giving you all honor, son. I, that's that's why he's he's talking about what you've done on cross on the cross. He he knows that. That's wisdom. He's talking about how they buried you, son. Man, that's just knowledge that he's and he's using it. And then you arose the third day, and then you came here and sat on my right hand right now in Acts chapter one. That is righteousness. That guy down there is full of wisdom. Yeah, but Father, they're calling him stupid and everything. I don't care. Not in my eyes. In, Act, in Revelation 20, we'll see who's, who's stupid or not. We'll weigh it out. And righteousness. My righteousness is not my fleshly righteousness. That's Jesus Christ. You cannot have no righteousness without Jesus' righteousness. And sanctification, I'm set apart. I'm set apart for those people who won't get the power. I'm set apart for those people who won't get the message, who won't listen. And redemption, I have been bought back by God, Acts 20, 28, by God's blood bought me back, signed and sealed me into an envelope and sealed that envelope and say, don't ever open this envelope. That's my son. Now try to take that and put that on a wall. You can't. But I'll tell you where the wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption does show up. It shows up in the Lamb's Book of Life. Now I don't know how that Lamb's Book of Life is right. This is what I think, and you can take this in a garbage can. Okay, as far as this point right now. I think that our names are written with the blood of Jesus Christ in that book, and it may not be. But my name being the Lamb's Book of Life, that's my wisdom, that's the righteousness, that's the sanctification, that's the redemption by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You can't get wisdom if you if you never known Christ. You can't get righteousness without Christ. You can't get sanctification if you don't have God. You can't get redemption if God has not brought you back. That's all by Jesus Christ. And I carry that word, that message, with that power to the world to say, you can get it too. That according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord and not sports or television or movies or my children or my great-grandchildren or my parents or the ball being this or the score was this but glory in the lord verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence we've got to get a new something when we get before god because the flesh ain't going to do that before god we've got to get a new body It's all about Jesus. You guys, you have a problem. This guy's a favorite preacher. This guy's a favorite preacher. No, no. Paul sums it all the way down through 31 verses. It's about Jesus Christ. See, those men you like, their CD, they're being foolish. The message is power, but they are foolish for what they're doing. But there's power in the message. And through that message is the wisdom, the righteousness, the sanctification, and redemption. And if we're going to glorify in anything, glorify Jesus Christ. No, Nothing and no one else. Glorify God. That's well-pleasing. And that's Revelation 4. Let's go. Let's look at Revelation 4 and we'll close. Revelation 4. We'll see what John has to say. John and Peter... Revelation 4, 11. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, so we just read, to receive glory, that's what we just read, and honor and power, we just read that, for thou, for thou hast created all things for thy pleasure. They are and were created. I was made to... Give God glory, give him honor, and give him power. That's why I was made. Fulfill that. 1 Corinthians 1. 
That's why that's the whole being. Adam and Eve was made. God, you're so wonderful. You're, you're great. Thank you for being. Thank you for sitting down with us this cool day afternoon. Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Gave honor to his wife. She gave honor to the devil. No more fellowship.